regardless of how hard you work at this and how long you work at it for and how great the results are that you achieve, the unfortunate reality is that you're probably never going to be genuinely satisfied with your physique. What's up guys, Sean Alawani, realscienceathletics.com. And in this video today, I'm gonna to be revealing seven red pill truths when it comes to gaining muscle, losing fat, and just building an impressive physique in general. So things that aren't very often talked about because even though they're true, they maybe aren't the most uplifting things to hear. And they're things that a lot of people just aren't aware of, um, especially beginners. But ultimately the truth is the truth. You guys know that we're not here to bullshit on this channel. I'm not gonna feed you a bunch of feel good false positivity just for the sake of it. And I think that most people will be better off in the long run if they understand the reality behind these seven things. And let me know in the comments which ones resonate the most with you or if there's anything else that you would personally add to this list. All right, the first red pill truth on the list has to do with genetics. And that's that genetics don't merely play a role in the muscle building process. They actually play a pretty critical pretty important role, probably more of a role than most fitness coaches would ultimately want to admit. Now, that said, anybody out there who has at least somewhere around average genetics, give or take, okay, with the proper program in place and enough hard work and consistency over the long term, they can still achieve what would be considered to be an impressive physique. So don't let this discourage you. But where genetics do play a pretty significant role is in terms of uh, just how quickly any given person can put on muscle, how seriously they're gonna need to take their uh, training and nutrition in order to build that muscle, what their ultimate muscle building potential is going to be, not just um, as a whole, but also on an individual body part level, and also what their physique is gonna specifically look like in terms of overall aesthetics. The reality is that unless you have upper tier genetics, unless you're uh, in the top few percent, you are not going to look like the vast majority of popular fitness influencers who are showing up in your Instagram feed. And that's because by necessity, for someone to reach that really popular position and gain that amount of attention out of the millions of other people who are posting fitness content, they're gonna need to have the type of genetics that allows them to build a truly elite physique and stand out from the crowd. And when it comes to looking really impressive when you're shirtless and when you're posing in uh, pictures and videos, Muscle shape, muscle insertions, and how that ties in with your height, uh, your limb length, your waist size, your joint size, all of this stuff is really important and it's pretty much entirely the result of hardwired genetics from birth. Um, looking impressive on social media isn't even really about raw muscle size, it's more so about being really lean and then having good structural genetics to go along with it since um, it's really hard to judge size just by looking at photos. So if you are pretty lean and you also have that optimal body structure for bodybuilding, you have those, um, you know, that really good muscle structure, those shape, those insertions, that's really what a lot of this comes down to. So I know this is a massive cliche, but ultimately you just have to make the best of what you have. Again, most people out there can still build a solid, muscular, lean, strong body, but just like you're not gonna become let's say an elite sprinter or an elite basketball player, an elite mathematician or musician, unless you have a certain amount of uh, God-given talent for those things, you're also not gonna have an elite physique unless you also have the genetic capacity for that. And some people might see that as discouraging, but I think you could also say that it's very liberating as well because understanding that can free you from the disappointment and the dissatisfaction that comes from having unrealistic expectations. Red pill truth number two, speaking of elite physiques on social media, you also have to remember that a lot of the people you see, probably more than you realize, females included, okay, on top of having elite genetics, uh, pharmaceutical enhancement is also a very, very common thing. Whether someone is doing full-blown cycles or something like TRT or SARMs, um, which still provides a very significant muscle building advantage. A lot of these guys, even if they were natural, their physiques would still be unobtainable by most people out there with average genetics. But then when you add PEDs on top of it, it just gets taken to a whole new level. Uh, not to mention that you start adding uh, you know, pumps and optimal lighting and angles and flexing and filters and uh, possibly even straight up Photoshopping on top of it, that takes it again to an even further level. Most people, if they are uploading a physique picture to a large audience on social media, uh, I'm not saying that everybody is you know, severely manipulating their photos, but uh, most people, they're gonna add at least you know, a little bit of sharpness, they're gonna improve the lighting a bit. Um, if I look closely in a lot of these pictures, I can see where people have uh, darkened the lines around their abs, things like that. Now, there are still plenty of legit natural lifters out there with impressive physiques who don't over 
overly manipulate their photos, but there's also a whole lot of fake natty Adobe Gain specialists mixed in there as well. So if you wanna use social media for educational purposes and follow people who are actually putting out useful content that directly assists your training and nutrition, follow me on Instagram. Or you just find physique pictures and videos to be motivational or entertaining, um, or you just enjoy watching and listening to certain personalities, even if you understand that it's not a real world uh, portrayal of how things are in reality, um, then that's fine. But do keep in mind that in a very high percentage of cases, it's exactly that. That, okay, it's not a realistic portrayal of the real world because very often you're looking at somebody with top year genetics on PEDs and who is only posting their very best, most optimized photos and videos. And sometimes those photos and videos are also very heavily edited as well. Red pill truth number three, if you are a natural lifter, which is the route that I recommend that the vast majority of people go, um, at the very least until you've been training um, solidly for a good five to 10 years naturally, and even after that point, most people should still stay natural um, unless they truly require something like uh, maybe TRT for legit medical purposes. But if you are a natural lifter, unless you've got those top one in a hundred genetics, you are not going to be very big and very lean at the same time. Okay, you're not gonna have the best of both worlds. Uh, you've probably seen these kinds of memes floating around at some point, and there is a lot of truth to this. If you're a natural lifter and you wanna be really big, uh, like the type of physique where you look significantly jacked even in clothes, you're gonna need to sit at a slightly higher body fat percentage in order to do that, probably in the higher teens, probably something like uh, maybe 16 to 20% body fat. If you wanna look really big, you're gonna to need to be okay with looking a bit softer. Um, you'll look awesome with a shirt on, but you're gonna look less impressive without a shirt on and less impressive in uh, photos and videos if maybe you make a living from fitness and that is something that's important to you. Um, it'll actually cause you to look smaller in photos and videos. And then on the flip side, if you wanna be really lean, you know, ripped six packs, striations, veins popping out everywhere, not only are you likely gonna end up with a variety of um, diet-related side effects, Okay, less energy, more hunger, low libido, um, irritable mood, things like that. Um, on top of that, you're also gonna have to sacrifice a pretty decent amount of overall muscle fullness and size in order to get there. So you're gonna look really impressive in a tank top and when you're shirtless and when you're posting things online, um, it's great for racking up those Instagram likes. But in real life, in regular clothes, you'll pretty much be flirting with uh, do you even lift status. But bottom line, guys, you're not gonna be really big and really lean unless you're on a consistent dose of that high quality pharmaceutical grade creatine. And personally, my approach is to go somewhere in the middle. So not too big and too soft, not too lean and too small. Um, I usually don't go below about 12% body fat and I rarely go above about 14%. And I think that strikes a good middle ground balance between size and leanness, as well as overall physical and mental functioning, uh, both in and out of the gym. Red pill truth number four involves the sharp diminishing returns that are at play when it comes to gaining muscle as a natural lifter. So muscle growth is not a linear process where for each set period of time, you just gain X amount of muscle and you just keep getting linearly bigger and stronger over time. Every pound of muscle that you gain will come uh, at a slower rate and will be more difficult to achieve in comparison to the pound of muscle that came before it. And that's because your body has genetic limits in place to prevent you from carrying too much muscle since muscle is metabolically expensive tissue that requires uh, more energy to maintain as you gain more and more of it. So in the first year of proper training, you're gonna make your newbie gains where muscle growth happens relatively quickly since it's a brand new stimulus for your body. And you'll probably put on something like 50% of the total muscle mass that you're ever gonna build, assuming that you do things properly uh, and consistently. And then from there, it should slow down by about half from year to year uh, as a rough estimate. So year two, you might be at 75% of your total gains, year three, maybe 85%, and then at years four and five and beyond, you should be right up near your natural limit if you've done things correctly. And that doesn't mean that you can't still make gains, but it's gonna happen way, way more slowly. And it's really important at that point to be patient with things since you'll basically be lifting for an entire year just to gain a very small amount of additional muscle. If you're expecting to make gains at the same rate in year three or year four or five, in comparison to year one, and you're just shoveling back a ton of calories and being too aggressive in the gym trying to force new muscle growth, you're either gonna end up fat or injured or fat and injured, which is probably not what you are aiming for. Red pill truth number five, switching gears a little bit, and that's on the topic of supplements. Okay, most supplements, not some, not a decent percentage, but most supplements do not work. 
period. And I say that as somebody who owns a supplement line and where it would actually be in my best interests to just hype the ever living crap out of supplements to get more people to buy them. There are a select few supplements that can be helpful for maximizing overall training performance, uh, body composition, overall health. Um, I use them personally and I've recommended them for many years. Uh, we currently have a pre-workout multivitamin and fish oil, which are three things that I've stood behind for many years. And we have a protein powder and a creatine on the way as well. But the bottom line is that the supplements that actually do work are very few and far between. And they're just the icing on the cake after your training and your diet is fully dialed in. Okay, They're not the cake itself like a lot of people out there think. 90 to 95% of the supplements being sold right now are complete bullshit and they're not actually going to do anything for you as far as building muscle and losing more fat is concerned. BCAAs, testosterone boosters, growth hormone boosters, uh, fat burners, glutamine, advanced forms of creatine, um, high-tech protein powders, uh, intra-workout supplements, CLA, the list just goes on and on. And then even within the categories of supplements that are worthwhile, um, like you know, a multivitamin, pre-workout, creatine blend, most companies don't even formulate those ones properly either. And the real truth is that a lot of these fitness influencers and YouTubers, um, I know it's not what people want to hear, but many of these people really don't have your best interests at heart, even though they might seem like they do on the surface. You know, they've got that big smile on their face. What's going on everyone? Vince here. They seem sincere or whatever, but the reality of this world is that People do in fact lie in order to make more money, as shocking as that might seem. And even for the fitness coaches out there um, who do have good intentions, many of them just aren't very knowledgeable about supplements in the first place. And so they just go ahead and they promote all this crap without even realizing that they're ripping their audience off. So don't take anybody's advice at face value. Be very skeptical, do your own independent research, because if you don't, chances are that you're gonna end up wasting a lot of money on a bunch of garbage that is ultimately providing you with little to no benefit and is really just a fairy tale. Okay, the right supplements in the right forms and the right dosages, that can help to round out your overall fitness program, but most of what's out there is really just a straight up steaming pile of worthless, stinky horseshit. Red pill truth number six, switching gears again, and these last two are a bit more on the sort of mindset side of things. And number six is that Regardless of how hard you work at this and how long you work at it for and how great the results are that you achieve, the unfortunate reality is that you're probably never going to be genuinely satisfied with your physique. As a beginner, you might be thinking, you know, if I could just put on some muscle, you know, lean down a bit, look even half as good as these guys um, are that I see on Instagram, that would be good enough and I'd be so happy with that but that is really not how things actually work in the real world. I guarantee that is not what will happen. What actually happens is that as your physique improves, the bar for what you consider to be a good physique is just gonna move along with it. And this applies to every area of life, uh, not just fitness, because it's just how our brains are uh, evolutionarily wired to keep us striving for more and more. With each new level that we reach, um, you know, each achievement that gets unlocked, whether it's fitness related or career related or maybe an athletic endeavor or really anything else that you're trying to improve at and that you're taking seriously, even if it's uh, you know, a video game that you're playing, once you achieve a new level, you'll get a temporary little burst of warm, fuzzy, good feelings. But pretty soon after that, uh, that new level that you've achieved is just gonna become your new normal. It won't satisfy you anymore. You'll mentally return to baseline and you'll just look ahead to the next level. You'll start comparing yourself uh, to the people who are at that next higher level. You'll aim for that, maybe you'll achieve it, and the cycle just goes on and on. And so I think it's more about uh, just accepting that and learning how to sort of live in harmony with that rather than thinking that one day you'll have arrived and you'll be fully satisfied and fully content with everything since, uh, sorry to break it to you, but it's just never going to happen, which is why, um, like a lot of people say, it's more about learning to enjoy the process rather than uh, getting overly hung up on the concrete external results. And then lastly, red pill truth number seven, the ultimate red pill uh, related to the previous one as well, but looking at things in an even uh, bigger picture standpoint, which is that building a lean and muscular body is not going to make you happy. Now, to be clear, it can definitely improve your quality of life, um, you know, consistent training, proper nutrition, those are obviously great habits to have that will physically make you feel good by just optimizing your overall brain chemistry in general, and also when you feel good about how you look, um, you know, you feel confident in your appearance, you like the way your clothes fit, you feel like a reasonably attractive person, 
yes, that will bring a certain level of satisfaction into your life that you didn't have previously. And I do encourage you to do it. You know, anybody who pretends that they don't care about how they look or that uh, they wouldn't rather be healthy and active and in shape is straight up lying. However, it's not going to do what a lot of people think it's going to do for them. It's not some uh, magic bullet where you're going to build this lean, strong, aesthetic physique and all the women are going to come flocking to you and all the men will bow down and respect every time you walk into the room and you'll just be in this state of constant bliss over your amazing new chiseled features. Again, it just doesn't work like that in the real world. Um, just like making a bunch of money won't do that for you, buying material possessions won't do that for you, getting a bunch of girls will not do that for you, none of these external things are going to put you in some kind of permanent happy state. Um, if there's anything in life that is going to bring you more lasting sort of um, genuine satisfaction or a higher degree of internal contentment, it's going to be the less sexy things like, you know, meaningful relationships, having a purpose of some kind, uh, contributing to others, being in nature, doing activities you enjoy. And then the one that overlaps with uh, fitness, which is physical exercise, good nutrition, proper sleep, things like that. Those are probably the things that will contribute more to your psychological well-being as opposed to having 3D delts or 9% body fat. So again, absolutely go ahead and build the body that you want. Look the way that you want to look. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, I myself work really hard at it and I enjoy it and I get a uh, feeling of satisfaction from being in good shape, just even on a basic uh, surface ego level. But don't think that it's going to fix you on some kind of fundamental level. It's not going to make you happy in the deepest sense if those other more key areas of your life, uh, community, purpose, health, if those things aren't in order. You know, if those things aren't in order, then you'll still be unhappy regardless of how aesthetic your physique might be. So thanks for watching the video. If you do want to cut through all the lies and BS out there and grab a complete step-by-step -step program for natural lifters that can take you from where you are now all the way up to your personal goal physique with everything mapped out in detail, make sure to visit quiz.seannell.com and grab my complete body transformation blueprint system that will teach you everything that you need to know and cut your learning curve down very significantly. You can click up here for that or use the link in the description box below. Give the video a like if you enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments what you want to see next. Make sure to follow me over on Instagram for more daily tips and updates and I will see you in the next video.